Now, here's a chart that I would like to, I use, you know, as I'm quite an artist here, uh, my little stick men. But I, I'm trying to show here um, how this looks uh, other than just with words. If you start at the bottom of the page, you, uh, you'll notice that there's an early man and he sees that the sun is in the sky and that it's moving across the sky. Now don't tell him any different because he can see with his very own eyes that sun is moving. No amount of discussion is going to convince him different in the early days of our development. But when man got civilized and got educated, he became religious. He then knew because of the education and culture that he lived in, that in fact, 500 years ago, we discovered that the sun is standing still and we are doing the moving, even though our eyes deceive us. We know from mind, from intellect, that the truth lies, we're doing the moving, and the sun is standing still. Now, the next stage is where the challenge lies. The spiritual man sees through faith and learns to fly into the unknown and the unseen. And he sees beauty in truth. He hears truth that's so beautiful it inspires him to rise up and want to have a more just world, to be a more loving being, to be a more enlightened soul so as to inspire the world around them. This is what Christ came to teach us, that it's good to be religious, it's good to be obedient, but you must take flight in the spirit. As he put it, take no thought for what you're going to eat or what you're going to put on. For everybody does that. Seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. I often think of it in terms of uh, we live a life where we have all of our values, our family, our work, our religion, uh, our education, etc. It's like on a spice rack, and then we take down the one that applies at this particular moment. But what Christ came to tell us is a new way to do things. Put the most important thing first in your life, your relationship to God, your relationship to his purposes, to his guidance, to the teacher from God in the day in which you live. And then from there, it, he will guide you as to the higher priorities of your life, your family, your career, your hobbies, your entertainment. And if you're going to, in the first case, on the spice rack, what happens? Every once in a while you get to juggling, you know, it feels like you're juggling them all in the air, and you drop one. Oh, there went my marriage. Or, oh, there went my religious faith. Fell on the floor. Whereas if you prioritize, if you're going to drop anything, you're going to drop the less important things. Because you're for sure going to take care of the things. Now notice the symbolism. On a spice rack, and then learning to prioritize. I suggest to you that's maybe a very good image of the cross. But it was Christ who introduced the invisible kingdom as being the most important aspect of our life above everything else. And if we plug in there, God's spirit and power and his grace will come into our life and guide us to our purpose and to our destiny and to the beautiful worlds that lie beyond that. Now, finally, you notice I have the, we, when faith, you turn to the sun of reality, the invisible sun. You know, there's two suns. There's the physical sun and there's the invisible sun. The invisible sun is the teacher from God, the manifestation of God, the Messiah of God in the day in which you live. And his teachings and his revelation are like an invisible sun shining on us. If we turn towards it, we are nurtured and we rise to meet it. If we turn away from it, sadly, we go into the world of error and mistakes. I won't go any farther. We all know about that journey. But then we can go yet to a higher place. After we've done this for a while, you begin to have confidence in the Word of God. 
you have confidence in the power of the heart to have faith. And as you do this, and as you're flying, shall we say, more often over the, the normal life, you gain the power to actually see what needs to be done. It's not just that you gain a power and a, and a wisdom personally, but you actually begin to see the need of what in this particular time, in this age, your life, where you're at, you begin to notice that the Spirit starts to guide you to what you can do and your part to play and guides you and empowers you to fulfill your destiny. I call that person the mystical man. He integrates the mind, the heart, and the Word of God and therefore sees now with the eye of God. And would you read number 14? So, quote 14 from the Course. Then will the manifold favors and outpouring grace of the Holy and Everlasting Spirit confer such new life upon the seeker that he will find himself endowed with a new eye, a new ear, a new heart, and a new mind. He will contemplate the manifest signs of the universe and will penetrate the hidden mysteries of the soul. Gazing with the eye of God, he will perceive within every atom a door that leadeth him to the station of absolute certitude. And I would suggest this is paradise. This is paradise while still walking around on two legs. This is attainable by each one of us in this day and age. We are called to rise to the occasion to truly cast our lot with the power and spirit of Baha'u'llah today and trust that he will pick us up and take us to realms we've never seen before and begin to see things in his word that make the word of God come alive like it's never been alive before and actually give us clues as to what comes next in our life. Thank you.